At upwards of around $3,000 a kilo, it's an indulgence with a price tag to match. It's no wonder that in Moscow, caviar is called the Tsar's dish. It's so tasty. It's popping in your mouth. It's, it's yummy. Yummy, is it? <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Out on the back blocks of Kazakhstan, in fishing villages beside the Caspian Sea, the best caviar, beluga, is eaten by the kilo. And this is how it's eaten here. On a piece of black bread, you spread it on, a little like we would Vegemite back home. And when you taste it, as I am for the first time, it's a bit salty, a little bit creamy, and something I could probably get quite used to. But the trouble is, it may not be around for much longer. <laughs> Caviar is cut from the belly of the sturgeon fish, a curious creature that survived since the time of the dinosaurs, and looks it. But the worldwide lust for caviar has brought Caspian sturgeon to the brink of extinction. Overfishing, poaching, smuggling and corruption have led to this, a miserable morning's haul of minnows. Beluga sturgeon can grow to six metres long and a thousand kilos. There's a, a, a good scheme of management and protection where the animals are allowed to actually pass up to the up to where they spawn, and then the, the habitat is available to them. Um, it could be a huge help to the population. American uh, fisheries scientist Fedro De Kaichis is setting up a research project to help preserve one of their last viable spawning grounds, Kazakhstan's Ural River. They don't reproduce until very late in age and they don't reproduce often. She and Dan Erickson are laying acoustic receivers to help them track sturgeon that they plan to tag during this year's spawning season. But they're finding a lot of official resistance. Research in the past has led to international bans on the export of caviar with a lot of people losing money. I think it's becoming more challenging to do science here. We faced a number of difficulties, including getting our gear into the country successfully, getting cooperation from the folks that we're working with. Lots of money is made from caviar, but not much by the men who do the hard work on the Ural River. Soviet-era cooperatives, quotas and price controls conspire to ensure profits from diminishing stocks work their way up the official food chain. Ironically, fishermen like Uzakpai Sadikov grew up being force-fed one of the world's most expensive luxuries because, his mother said, it was good for him. And like anything that's good for you, it can take some getting used to. <laughs> the delicacy has other rumoured attributes. It's supposed to reduce the effects of alcohol and put you in the mood for love. <laughs> Everyone 
everyone's frankly astonished to learn what people in the West will pay for their little treat. By law, caviar is strictly controlled with quotas set by the UN agency that governs trade in endangered species. That way, what's processed and exported can be limited to ensure the industry remains sustainable, in theory. In practice, the illegal trade may be 12 times bigger than the legitimate one. We visit a market in the nearby city of Atarau with a hidden camera. A whispered request and a whole kilo of caviar is offered. This is just the cottage industry end of the business. We found about 25% of the time what you think you're getting, you're not getting. Sometimes you're getting an endangered species, sometimes you're getting lower quality caviar. The tighter the quotas, the bigger the black market profits. Это очень сложная и серьезная паутина. Существуют различные каналы вывоза икры и рыбы за рубеж. Главным образом это все идет через Российскую Федерацию. There are occasional highly visible police raids, but the black market is a sophisticated multi-million dollar shadow industry controlled by an international mafia that routinely corrupts officials. Будем отталкиваться от минимального. Одна белуга дает от 50 и выше килограммов икры сердца, что составляет в общей сложности, ну, 50 килограммов это порядка 30 тысяч долларов. От одной, от одной удачной рыбалки можно получить 50 тысяч долларов с одной белуги. Police are one of half a dozen competing agencies charged with stopping the poachers. They promise to show us some dedicated law enforcement. But journalist Lev Guzikov lets us in on what's an open secret around here. Ну, а в первую очередь у нас браконьерами называют наши наши силовые структуры, которые которым припадает львиная доля от прибыли. The water police, however, portray themselves in something of an heroic mold, engaged in a battle where technology and resources often favor the bad guys. Все-таки мы работаем в открытом море. Встречается, конечно, опасность. В прошлом году были задержаны дагестанские байды, у них были взяты автоматы, гранаты. We set out on the Caspian Sea for a high octane pursuit. Highly coordinated commando tactics, ultimately successful. It's been an impressive display, but that's all it is a display, a mock up for the cameras. Да, вы были в водке с одним из главных браконьеров нашего региона. Практически каждый малый в городе знает, что 70% браконьеров работают под крышей либо от извините, водной полиции, либо рыбоохраны. It sounds like a caviar mafia to me. 
Конечно. Yes, of course. Да, нет такого рекордной мафии. У нас в Казахстане такого. Я сейчас только у вас от вас слышу. Я не сказал бы серьезные обмензовые банды. Так, таких у нас нет. On another day, the water police catch up with real villains. They turn out to be the Coast Guard officers doing a little poaching on the side. This time there's a real chase into the Ural River and into a maze of back channels torched by yet more poachers to confuse and slow down pursuers. The chase ends when the fisheries patrol runs out of fuel. On it. It's a bleak picture for researchers hoping to protect and preserve the age-old sturgeon fish. Put a receiver in, take a receiver out. While we've been in Kazakhstan, Fedra Dekaichi's research project has been shut down. She's been given a lame excuse, something about fishing quotas. But she has more than an inkling of what this is really about. I think this has been a pretty closed system for a while where people weren't really allowed to work here. How sensitive is it trying to get scientific information about sturgeon and why do you think it's so sensitive? Very sensitive, considered state secrets, for sure. It's a very lucrative industry. It's not transparent. It never has been. Um, Four years of hard work has come to nothing. But what really breaks her heart is the thought a species could soon be wiped out, loved to death for its eggs. It's one of these things where it's a luxury item. It is not necessary for anyone's survival. So, you know, we could actually be driving species towards extinction for something that's completely unnecessary and just sort of a luxury. The Caspian Sea has always been a source of great wealth for the people who live near it. They've struck oil here, and it seems the enormous riches that lie beneath it now overshadow the abundance of life within it. Even if the sturgeon disappear entirely, vast fortunes will still be made. But none of it by those whose ancestry was built on these shores and who cannot imagine life without that unique, tasty little morsel that has graced their tables for centuries. It would be tragic for there to be a life for these people without a, a huge part of their natural history, their cultural heritage, um, and it could happen. Kalinka, 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 Kalin